Yes, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Weekly Podcast, yes. My name is Broken Josh Burrell, and tonight, me and my brothers, Brother Nation and Brother Reapers, we will become the podcast of God. Delete, 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 delete. delete. Yeah. Welcome guys to another episode of Pro Wrestling Weekly. I'm your host Steve, also known as Steve the Reaper. Follow me on Twitter, which will be in the description down below. Let's get right into this podcast episode. So today, the Wolfpack, we're all here. First, Josh Morell. I'm always here. And Hayden Fox. I try to be here. So, we're going to kick... So, we're going to kick... Oh, there's some echoing going on over there. That was weird. Uh, so we're going to kick it off this podcast episode with a bang. Talking about Battleground 2017. <laughs> uh, I, we'll just get yeah. to, like, I, I guess... I, some people will call it a highlight. Some people are very disappointed in it. But it's, like, the only talking point around Battleground... Jinder Mahal retained the tag Well, mm, the let me interrupt you. That tag match. That tag oh, match yeah, was the only good match. part of that show. Oh, yeah. In my opinion. That was match of the night. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, it ended up with with my reaction screaming down the fucking thing at t- one or two o'clock in the morning. Fuck the new day. So, you, you, you react, the, the, the finish and result wasn't good, but the match was. In my opinion. But, unfortunately, a match of the night was overshadowed by the happenings of the main event. Jinder Mahal retained the WWE title in a Punjabi prison match due to the great Kali returning to the WWE. They really want that Indian market, don't they? Yeah, yeah I thought. It's like T- they want TNA. They, they literally want TNA, but don't want to buy TNA. It's like, literally, they're, they're infiltrating everything that TNA's doing. And so honestly, like, honestly, like, I've joked and laughed about it on Twitter, but my serious reaction is they're just in it for the Indian market. If it wasn't for the Indian market, he wouldn't have done that, and the great Gally wouldn't be, be back. Exactly, why the fuck is he back, you know? <laughs> Are you talking about Carly? Well, yeah. Um, well, Carly it was good for him because his promotion... Uh, has funded a lot of Indian talent to the WWE. Um, well, stuff people you won't see on N- well, even on NXT for a little while, but um, Cardi's helped with that a lot. So he's been training them down in India, and then he's well, I don't himself. He hasn't contributed that much. Just contributed shit like this moment. Um, I literally, my final resolution was I was hoping that Randy Orton won then fucking Virginia. So, my re- gut reaction, I, what I wanted was Corbin to win overall and just uh, ha- have the title in hand uh, and then the Pajabi prison just rises as he holds up the belt. That was that was my ideal thing that I wanted, but I just got shit for fed down my, my throat, even from Road Dog or Vince, or well, it's obviously Vince, but Road Dog writes his shit, so, well, apparently, I'm not going to put the blame honestly, on him, because he'll probably block me on Twitter, I don't really honestly, care, I, just, I think I've blocked him already. <laughs> honestly, like, current Orton, I prefer Jinder over the current Orton, Orton in his prime, however, Orton any day of the week. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, oh. but... But currently, I just, I just don't like Jinder. I don't like the fact that a job has been pushed just because of his his body, upper body, and the fact that the Indian market. I just don't like it. Like that's not Jinder's fault per se, but Jinder's not really that good of a wrestler in my opinion either. So that kind of worsens it for me. He's not like that's, well, he's not an AJ Styles, obviously, but. 
he just gets by. Exactly, but if that's a way to get into the Indian market, then that's how they're going to do it, isn't it? And they're what other way could they get into the Indian Kali, market? Because Jinder, they hate Jinder, apparently, according to Indian people. Actual Indian people are actually in that market. They're actually wanting to watch the brother. Instead of the fans at TNA pay to watch their show. If that's the case, and that was smart to bring back the great Kali, because he's recognized by almost every single... Personally. I guess that ninety nine percent of the other markets that are, that are in, except Hayden, of course, and a few others maybe, are going to hate it. Like, well, I, it, I, but... I, as I've said, I laughed and joked to it on Twitter, but my serious reaction is I don't like it. You know. Well, well, yeah. Well, I'm only going off your gut reaction here. I'm not. I'm obviously I didn't know that until you just said it. So, I'm going off your initial reaction, which now has been debunked, but. You know what I mean? Like, a certain select few did because they liked Carly in 2007, which I find impossible to believe. I think they're fucking liars. But that's just me. Um, yeah, Battleground shit overall. But I, I think the next week's lot of television improved my spot on WWE because I was legit thinking of quitting WWE at that point. I was That was how mad that pay-per-view got me. So... Uh, yeah, and to also, to put a point on Nakamura's match, I just found that silly and stupid. Right. And they did a rematch on SmackDown, which was way better. Just, I don't know why they make these pay-per-view matches shit to make SmackDown look better. See, I thought, like, that finish for Corbin and Nakamura, I thought that was a way to protect both guys, but after seeing the result yeah. on SmackDown, I was like, well, what's the point of that? I mean, yeah, yeah, if that's more just going to win, what's the point? Well, right, that's what I'm saying. I, I guess... Yeah, like, that's more winnable. I guess it helped when Daniel Bryan came out. It was like, John Cena versus Shinsuke next week on SmackDown, and whoever... That's going to win in a fuck finish. Yeah. And whoever... Either that or... Like, whoever it's wins, either that or Cole touch Shinsuke or something. We will not get either a clean finish. Or something will happen. You, you, you will not get a clean Cena versus Nakamura on free TV. No. No. No, maybe on pay per view, but I think Cena will be done after Mania this year. I'd say yeah, I think I all, all the people that are from the Ruthless Aggression era have gone by 2019. I think Orton goes in 2018, mid. Cena goes April. Who else? I don't think anyone else is. Well, Undertaker's gone already. Brock's going to go after Mania, I think. I think his last before, last appearance will be on the Raw, saying thank you and goodbye. And Heyman's going to go too, unfortunately. But I think that's for the better, because he can do uh, something else. He can improve his Heyman Hustle site, which has been dormant for a little while. Um, H since the, the Heyman UK tour, the YouTube channel's been dormant for me. I haven't seen really much. But if Heyman can improve that, that'd be good. Brock, I could see him going back to UFC for one more, couple of more fights. Maybe against Conor, like, a, like a mixed division match between him and Conor McGregor. I'd like to see that. The two biggest draws in UFC history. Um, but, yeah, everyone from the roof is a questionnaire I can see gone before 2019. That's kind of unfortunate because... Like, for me, for example, while I didn't really watch wrestling back during the Ruthless Aggression era, that was still, in a sense, an era that we grew up through. And then working back yeah. on old matches, it's like, wow, you know, these guys were really good in their prime. And you bring up the point that it, it's possible they could be gone by 2019. That's kind of surreal when you think about it. Mm. Because, you know... Is it Go ahead, Josh. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say it's not a not a like an unreachable goal either. Not a goal, but it's not an unreachable um, thing. It's not unrealistic. But that's why I said 2019, because that gives them two years. Maybe Cena might stay for like the big marquee matches, but I don't see Orton staying very long. Uh, yeah. I oh, Big Show. Big Show. I see retiring this year. Uh, this year coming. WrestleMania will be his last one. Maybe with him winning the Andre Battle Royal. 
just to say, oh, we've screwed you over. All the... Oh, no, he's won one. Oops. Um, I forgot. I, I literally blank out the WrestleMania 31 because of that finish. Um, but, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I'm probably the only one out of you two that was watching the Attitude Era. Well, not every week, but like I cut, caught it every now and again. The WWF pay-per-views on Channel 4. Yes, they were on free TV. Well, only four of them, but they were on free TV with commercials. Fucking annoying. But they got kicked off of that because uh, the cat showed boobs. Pretty d- decent boobs, I do say so. Oh, my God, why do I said that? Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, they got banned because of boobs. No more free t- no more free pay-per-views because of boobs. That's... Same with Mae Young. I think she did that as well. But I don't want to get into that because I've watched that accidentally twice. And I don't want to envision it ever again. Uncensored too, and it's or uh, uh, mm, no, 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 no. I don't know why the Fed actually released the DVD with it uncensored. I literally do not know why they did. Hmm. But anyway, yes, Battleground was shit. There you go. There you go. Now we know what Josh does in his free time, so it's out there. In the no, program. I do not watch my young. <laughs> I do not watch my young's tip. And actually, this this is accidentally st- snapped in off because I stepped on it, but. That's another story. I don't want want to tell today. Yeah, fair enough. Because I, because I accidentally found out this morning, uh, yesterday, that I snapped both of my uh, WrestleMania X7 discs. Oh. By accident as well. Yeah. So I'm fucked with that. So I'm stuck with the network version for that now. I've not, I've not, I've not got all the licensed music, unlicensed music anymore. I've still got Rolling, so that's the only one that's really unlicensed. And go. Austin theme as well. So. I'm kind of not missing out, really. But, you know, uh, yeah, background shit, yeah. Yeah, no wrong. So, it seems like we cannot get enough of the Hardys versus TNA slash Global Force Wrestling and the whole entire broken gimmick. Um, Ed Nordholm, I hope I pronounced yeah. that last name right. Yeah, you got it. You got cool. it. And you guys will be happy for me. I actually pulled up an article, so I know what I'm talking about. I've never done that you, before. You read? I know, dude. Like, real talk, though, I'll actually read articles. I prefer reading articles over books. It's weird. Yeah. No, that's obvious. Well, I do read a book from time to time. I've got a couple of Jericho's books, which I have not read one page of. Those, those are entertaining, though. Those are fantastic. And, I, and, I, and I've, I've got the audio, but, but it doesn't count. But I, I'll say it anyway, of the death of WCW by Brian Alvarez, and I'm about three hours in. So, yeah. That was a good I need book. to read some... Yeah, it is. It is it basically just... Lamb- well, it's kind of got the blessing of Steph and Triple H, but obviously they hate them because obviously they're dirt sheets, but and they've got the blessing of that to use WCW trademarks and all that. But um, no, it's a good book. Books are good, but well, I used to always read the Fed magazines. 2005, when I had a SmackDown and a Raw magazine. Imagine if magazines were still around, we'd have that exact same thing. That means we'd have to pay, say, five dollars each per magazine every month. Ten dollars a month for just a magazine. Oh, Neil, no, that, I, I don't want to envision that because that cost me a hell of a lot of fucking money <laughs> back in the day. The WWE magazines, now dear. But yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, it's a, yeah, it's a thing. TNA, uh, yeah. fucking fuck TNA, fuck and all I'm fuck and and from fuck GFW, fuck all of them, fuck Vince Russo too. And yeah, um, and yeah, fuck that Al. I think Rebby said she was releasing more t-shirts than I might get one. That'd be pretty hilarious, I, honestly. If they're making merch off, and I it. might just go to a TNA house show in in London and just fucking wear that, like just changing the changing the toilets and just wear fuck that Al. <laughs> Oh, so, no, I'm not going to see that show ever again. Fuck that. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description tour with the article from PW Stream because I'm not biased or anything. It's cool. Uh, so, I'm going to read part of the article where it highlights if Nordholm would actually sell the intellectual property of the whole entire broken universe. And this was. If you want the short answer, no! Well, short answer, but I'm going to. Read the long, yeah, the long answer ones. Oh. and try oh, not to cough. I, 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 I interrupted you. I apologize. Oh, you are okay. So, quote, I've stopped thinking about this. We have a show to put on and a company and a brand. 
We've got things on our plate that are more important than sorting out the quote-unquote broken brilliance. I made a genuine effort to resolve something to benefit the Hardys as a goodwill gesture to Matt. It didn't reach a conclusion and we're moving on. We're not going back to it. I'm not interested in opening a new dialogue. I'm not interested in opening another conversation about it. We made our best effort. It didn't happen. And I'm not going to negotiate all over again. Unquote. So, having said that, is it possible that we could see this broken gimmick sooner than later now? I think it's delayed a significant chunk because I think the Hardys will see Ed Norheim in court for one because Rebby did an interview on Pro Wrestling Sheets Wrestling Sheet Radio I think that's the right name of it but yeah no um, or Wrestling Sheet Podcast on iTunes and shit like that, that was they've got way more followers than us fuck it it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic podcast I listen to it every week mm. the whole two hours on Dash Radio as well even though it's not available in the United Kingdom, I get it because I'm smart. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, Rebby just goes off on again on TNA and ignore home and how fucking dumb Jeff Jarrett is, and I just love it. It's just it's just bliss to my ears, it's and I'm going to listen to it as soon as this podcast is done again. Literally, it 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 it, it makes my ears sort of have a have a wave of like orgasmic feelings, not actual orgasm, but you know. It, it makes my ears tingle with glee, if you, if you know what I mean. But yeah, no, um, it's, I hope the Hardys take them to court and sue them I hope the Hardys take them to court and sue them on the fucking bed. I heard myself. Heard yeah, no, um, no, fuck, fuck TNO. Yeah, fuck Ed Norheim, fuck the, no, not fuck the Hardys, they're actually good. Uh, fuck GFW, fuck Vince Russo, fuck Jeff Jarrett, never drew a dime. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's, that's me done. <laughs> Aiden, what's your thoughts on this whole entire situation? Do you think we will see the broken gimmick sooner or later? I don't know we'll see it at some point, but later. I'm later. with Josh on this one. I think it's delayed because I think they will take him to court and stuff. So, uh, But it'll happen. Uh, it will happen. It's just a case of when and how quick they can get all this court stuff sorted out. But again, you... yeah, J Josh is right. Fuck TNA. Fuck the Owl. Fuck Jeff Jarrett. He said it. Yeah. And fuck Vince Russo, because why not? And fuck Vince McMahon, because why not too? As soon as, soon as they go to... Fuck that old man. As soon as this whole entire thing goes to court, there's going to be a flash mob mentality on Twitter. It's going to be glorious. Everyone's on the side of, well, I see you say the WWF, but no, that's wrong. One, it's not WWF, and two, it's not them. The Hardys... Everyone's gonna be on their side, except oh, yeah. for the TNA fuck boys. Sorry for my, sorry, sorry for them fanboys that have heard their fifis because they call them fuck boys. They are. Call them they're them. literally, <laughs> they're literally grotesque. They they've got beards. Oh, that guy on. Oh, I don't want I don't want to poke any holes, but yeah, no, I don't like the fat TNA fans because everyone's like, oh, anthems all. This is better, like. Oh, I've had an altercation with people on Twitter through the SLTD account, as I've said before. And, oh, TNA fans are just, You've never just so that. stuck up. You've never said that on the podcast. I've never. Oh, okay. Well, I will I'll reiterate then. I, well, may, I may have um, had to edit something out in the past. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it at that then. But the, some of the TNA fans are dismal. But some of them are good. Some of them, some of them are decent. They just, they just accept every wrestling product, which I like. Uh -huh. So they watch NXT. Some of them watch the main roster stuff. Not all, which I kind of understand now. Um, See, I, I love a bit like, except from this week when I've watched all three shows live. The show that I've watched live like beforehand has been NXT, not Raw, mm -hmm. not SmackDown, mm -hmm. but NXT. Yeah. Joe, well, actually, I haven't watched NXT live in a couple of weeks. I'm the complete opposite. I haven't been watching Raw live either. Well, I have some weeks and I haven't some other weeks, depending on how tired I am, because it is all, all one o'clock in the morning. Um, Get the like, first two hours done, but then it's that last hour, it's the third hour. No, it's, it's the first hour for me. I'm just knackered straight away. <laughs> unless it's a, unless it's a good good opening segment. Like last week's was. Yeah. So, 
I'll give it that, but then the rest of Raw just dragged for me. It was a decent episode, but it just dragged. If we're doing who won this, uh, who won the week in SmackDown for me, and I'm kind of say that SmackDown wins the majority because AJ and even Cena to a point, Corbin, Nakamura. He, uh, my favourite at the moment, even though he's jobbing at the moment, is Mike Kanellis. The power of love. <laughs> oh, we have to play his theme here and for a little while. That, that power's getting to Josh. Yeah, well, that, I, lo- that I love mean, cheesy love, but... love gimmicks, and this is and Andy Andy burned TNA, so it makes him makes me love him more. Not in a, in an actual sense, but you know what I mean. I love his gimmick. Not him as a... Well, you know what I mean. I'm not gay. Promise. Are you sure? Yes. Are you... okay. Yes. Not that there's anything good. wrong with that. No, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, no. I'm not personally. And I'm not offended by gays either. I, I'm, I'm not homophobic. There you go. That's exactly. Cool. My, 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 my personal statement. That is, that is my legal statement. And if, and if anyone tries to... Tries to uh, juice it or spin it. I will sue you. <laughs> I will sue you like Anthem. I'm joking. Oh. I won't. Oh. I'll just slap you with a with a, with, a, with a don't do that again, please. Slap on the wrist and take your video down or audio clip or whatever. Because I I I'm I'm, I'm not a gay basher. I know people on YouTube are some of them, but I'm not. I promise. There you go. <laughs> no, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, Hardy. Yeah, Jeff. Fuck yeah. No. <laughs> I, I hope that. I hope that. I hope. To be honest, I shouldn't really say this because it kind of puts people out of work. But I somehow want them to close because it teaches them a lesson of don't fuck anyone over. But that, that means loads of people lose jobs and hope the Fed just pick them all up and just bankrupt you know. Well, he, he, we were actually um in a group chat. We were talking about TNA. And how it they're like a cat with nine lives, they just won't die. And like personally, like you said, I don't want to see anybody out of a job because that sucks. But yeah, TNA is not dying out, like they're always on the verge, but th- something's holding them together. Like, what, hmm. what could be holding them together for this long? Well, their sponsorships, quite frankly, that Panda Energy. So they had for a while while Dixie was in power and then they lost it and Dixie got chucked out basically and Anthem took over um, and, their, and their network deals have been quite lucrative until Destination America because they were on Fox Sports I think uh, look like their minor network like literally bottom the barrel oh, oh excuse me um, and then Spike obviously <laughs> long run good network Spike Icom obviously that's going to draw a lot of people. And they got off of that because Spike got pissed at Vince Russo was still hired uh, secretly. Then um, Destination America, then that got done in because uh, Dixie Carter sent an angry email to the executives at Destination America. And then on Pop TV, which is the Dawson's Creek replay network, apparently. I don't know because I don't watch Pop TV because I don't have it. But apparently, people, well, you can get it on PlayStation View, which... Apparently, have jacked up the price because reasons because they've added the NFL network and shit. So the yeah, TNA's in the bad. The worst spot they've been in was when Billy Corgan was in charge and was bound for glory. I think it was one of their bigger pay per views, and literally I had no money. They were literally about to cancel until Anthem saved the day, and basically bought the company there and then effectively. So. Anthem have basically been their saving grace. And as they're a multimedia conglomerate, apparently, um, they own the Fight Network, based in 100-plus countries, um, except here. Uh, we did have a Fight Network sort of thing, but it wasn't owned by Anthem, I don't think. And then turned into the wrestling channel, which showed Ring of Honor and uh, World Sport replays from literally 30, 20 years ago, or then, which was 10 years ago. But there you go, um, no... It's a difficult situation because, again, I don't want people out of a job, but I just want to see TNA die. Because no, no people deserve to work in that environment. If Jeff Jarrett running amok, just 
hang around with the boys, like Eric Bischoff did in WCW. It's exactly the same thing. Except Ed uh, Warnhorn, he's not as big a media conglomerate as Ted Turner. I just wish TNA was no more, but then, like, the superstars and stuff in TNA or GFW, whatever the fuck it's called now, it'd go to... Yeah, they called or- this week. God, already adds a backup plan of like what other company they go to. Then I'd be fine with them getting out of power and just shutting down. It's the fact I've, that I've I've got a few power. ideas of where I want a few people to go. If if I may, so I want Ethan Carter to go back to go to NXT. Um, yeah. Bobby Lashley to go to MMA. Alberto Del Rio to fucking leave the business altogether. He's a fucking scumbag. But I don't want to get into that. Um, uh, uh, Conan to go back to his promotion. Um, fuck. I don't know who else is in the company. That Sienna girl go to NXT. Um, Ali or Cherry Bomb, as I know her, made it to go back to the new scene or NXT. Um... Probably Indy seems better for her, but yeah, no, I just want to see them out of TNA because more, more people are leaving at the minute. I'm surprised James Storm hasn't left already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying because I know he had a brief stint with NXT, what, two years ago now? Mm. Yeah. And he's like out with an injury, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, personally, from not watching TNA as much, seeing James Storm, I enjoyed him. Yeah, and NXT. Know, so, oh, yeah, exactly. I hope he money on comes back. WWE, but. Pop. How they come up with a new name and tag as heels? Probably maybe glorious beer or something. Beer glory, no, or I don't know, but something like that, like a glory beer or beerious or something. Glorious. Uh, I... Sorry, beers. Glorious mm-hmm. stories. Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Higher uh, if if, if yeah. WWE uses one of our names, we want fucking royalties, bitch. Come on, Vince! We want royalties! Yeah! I'm 95% sure Finn Balor's a PWW uh, closet fan. Just based off yeah, of his well, latest t shirt design. That, that just yeah, cool. well, WWE has their designs done mar- like nearly a year in advance, so we kind of maybe, well, inadvertently copied them in rea- actual reality, but not knowing. We did. Just see what we did the exact idea at the exact same time. Because hmm. the Hardy Boys shirt was in the works months before they did it, it, that return. They just press print as soon as they know, know they're coming back. No, it's that's, easy. That's an interesting... That's that's actually kind of interesting. So, like, what if... If they thought that somebody was returning, then they would just have a design out and ready to print? Well, basically, because they have to have the shirt, maybe have the shirts on after Mania. So say they have a limited run of the new Hardy shirts, and they get put up and shot for pre-order. Or say, well, obviously this is different, because this is a title belt, but the UK Championship, that took months to do, because the T-shirts is, is simpler, because obviously, draw up the design, put it on, well, most of now designers use these drawing tab- tablets on Photoshop, which I want to do that in the future, but I can't really draw, so I probably won't. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty a, a good wizard at Photoshop, obviously. My art's infiltrated uh, or all over this thing, so, uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, it's quite, I think it's quite easy to, to just draw up a design and then just press print when they return. The print the shirts, obviously, in... They, knowing WWE, they have automatic presses. They don't have people doing it. They only have people packing it up, I reckon. I think. I may be wrong. They may have robots to do that too. So, yeah. I gotcha. We, will, we, we should get a behind the scenes of WWE shop. Your WWE shop order. That should be say good. if you order like a $300 worth of stuff. Say you order a wrestling belt. And you can and you get videos of how it's made. That like is- like say, if you ordered a Rolex, then you'd see... Imagine that. that, that that'd, be your, that'd be a dream. Obviously, for me, because I'm a belt collector, so, you know, 
say if I bought the United Kingdom Championship, which I'm hoping to in the next few months, uh, you'll see a picture of that when I ever get it on the podcast. Um, yeah, just, I just love belts. And if, if I could see my order getting made, say if I bought a few T-shirts as well, they show that as well. See it getting pressed, getting packaged. That's just my thing. Then opening it on camera, obviously, as I do. WWE Euroshop unboxings. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if I'm getting an order anytime soon, so I won't be doing any more, but I hope so. But, yeah, no. Um, each shirts are easy to print, really. It's just a press of a button on a computer and add those. It's not, as, it's not as slow as a Commodore 64 where you had to type everything you wanted to do. Literally everything. Siri, but typing. <laughs> everything. Wow. Yeah. This is kind of Probably a strange easy. segue, but it, it fits. Uh, WWE budget cuts. Uh, there is an article <laughs> that went around the internet a few weeks ago about how they're going to do less pyro because of budget cuts. And I, I'm going to guess that whatever reason you may read into, I think Talking Smack being moved to being a pay-per-view after show, I think that could also be something with the budget cuts. But it's kind of interesting that WWE... Now, I could be just ignorant. Now, that's completely a second thought. Uh, but it's kind of surprising to hear a company like WWE are making budget cuts over small little things. It's just weird. Yeah, just, huh? I've been saying all along since I've heard about the budget cuts that at the end of the day they're a multi well, I think they're a multi billion dollar company. Million, so, million, I think they're just about million to billion Russia. Vince is no longer a billionaire so that was declared about a year ago because their earnings until like literally this last year were down the drain. They literally got up to pre-network numbers last year of uh, operating income of about $84 million. So I don't think Vince is a... He's borderline billionaire, if, if that's the case. Borderline. Uh, then he's got a ton of fucking money. So... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More than <laughs> us. More than you and I. Imagine oh. if we had that kind of money. Jesus Christ. Weekly, be more be, be in stadiums every week. Imagine <laughs> that. A podcast live through... 50,000 people sitting there watching you talk. How boring would that be? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> maybe, no, be sick. Three hour, sh- three hour show would be more entertaining than Monday Night Raw every week. Uh, uh, sure. There's actually swearing in it. <laughs> uh, you can actually pull up the middle finger when you want to. Not get zoomed up, zoomed down when you're pointing the middle finger like Orton did a few years ago. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one. Mm, no, but, yeah... You, if I don't find it necessary, but if Vince wants to invest more, maybe in well, because apparently loads of net, obviously as you said, talking smack's been cancelled. Well, I would say effectively cancelled because I don't watch the pay per view post things. Because I heard about Jerry Lawler being on it, and I completely went nope. Considering how shit the pay per view was, I didn't want to see Jerry Lawler for thirty minutes. Thank you. Um, so. And Pyro, the worst one for me is Pyro. Because who wants to see AJ Styles just go like that without no bang? And I've been there in That's person for sort of entrance, like the actual firework entrance version, not yep. the smoke. Because they did, did the smoke at the live events. That's gone now too, apparently. Because Becky Lynch's uh, entrance was when the smoke comes up. That's gone. So yeah, they basically yes. nuded every entrance ever, including Lesnar's. He That's the, the biggest the, the arms, and then nothing. Absolutely sweet fuck all. Like, I've, I have gone to events, all of them have had pyro except the Live in London show, and then maybe the one in uh, Wembley as well. But no, and TakeOver London as well. That didn't have pyro. That had, I think, uh, smoke. But anyway, no, uh, to, the point, to the point, I've always been in a pyro situation. And it, yeah, it's unnecessary per se. It's fucking neat to look at. Like you see, you go to a pay per view event or SmackDown or Raw taping live and see that, then you know you think you're getting a Fourth of July every week, wouldn't you? 
Uh, if you've got, well, mind you, I don't know anyone that goes to every show every week. I envy that fucking bank account. Um, but no, I just think it's unnecessary, but I needed to cut it anyway. Even if they have a WrestleMania big blowout, then maybe. I don't, well, even, I don't see it as WrestleMania is going to be in a indoor stadium this year, next year. I'll be there, by the way. Um, and I may bring WrestleMania coverage when I'm at uh, Mercedes Benz, but that's pending. I can't confirm or deny that. I may not even be going. But I, I think I am. I'm 90%. But if that changes, I'll let you know. But oh, I could be, be, be doing periscopes and all that shit from uh, Mercedes and New Orleans and Raw and SmackDown and all that shit, NXT, Hall of Fame, all that stuff. I'll be going to all of it. And maybe, well, what indies are around? I maybe go to WrestleCon. I'm thinking about it. So, um, yeah. If it's for that, then fine. But it just sucks when I see AJ or Brock coming out with, you no know, bang, like their signature pyro or, well, AJ made it a signature pyro entrance, but um, that's gone. And it's just sad. Sad, to be honest. But, and the fact that the budget cuts originally, no original stages and pay-per-views. Just see the fucking SmackDown set for Battleground. Oh, that's all right then. The SmackDown set, in my opinion, is way better than the Raw set. More uh, more stuff going on, in my opinion. The Raw set just looks bland. And the fact that they will use the Raw set for the Raw Rumble and the Survivor Series not making them special either. Um, yeah, Survivor Series again. SummerSlam. SummerSlam last year used the Raw set. Like... You'd expect the big four to at least have a unique stage. No, it's just WrestleMania. Like, it, put, lads, put big, more effort into the big four, please, to make it feel more special. Put more effort in it, lads. And Pyro, bring Pyro back. Hashtag it. Mm. <laughs> so, you mentioned yeah. SummerSlam, which is a perfect segue into talking about SummerSlam as a whole. Now, we are about, um, well, actually a few weeks away now from SummerSlam. <laughs> A uh, few matches have been confirmed. Some matches are undecided yet. Um, mm -hmm. So, let's talk about SummerSlam just a little bit. Uh, WWE title, obviously, Jinder Mahal, the modern day Maharaja. Wow, I actually said that for the first time without butchering it. Let's go. Um, he's going in as champion, obviously. And. We mentioned how Cena and Shinsuke Nakamura on free TV, there's bound to be a hokey finish to it. So, who is going to face yeah, Ginger at SummerSlam? Oh. They're doing a four-way for the Universal, so uh, why not make it a three-way? Yay! That's now, I'm, I'm going to sort of give away what would be a sort of prediction. But I can see Mahal losing it, whether it is to Cena or Nakamura. But to get the real heat, have Nakamura win with a Corbin cash. Yeah. That's the heat. But it'll also be a historic moment in a way, because he's the only person... Well, no, except AJ. Has he run, run the... No, he hasn't run a Ring of Honor title. Oh, never mind. Neither has AJ, I don't think. But he's the only one to win the IWGP... Uh, in a con I mean, said internet then. Oops. Uh, IWGP in a continental title, the IWGP heavyweight title, and then the WWE title. Nakamura's won some other championships, but I can't name them at the moment. The only other de de uh, decorated athlete in from Japan is Jushin Liger, who I absolutely adore, and I can't wait to see in London. By the way. There will be there will be clips on on the podcast after Ring of Honor of me fanboying at Jushin Liger coming out. Literally, I will send them to Steve and he will put them in. I will force him with my Power Ranger sword or something. <laughs> Your Power Ranger sword? He's a Power Ranger, I'm doing. Right, uh, who, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, but no, um, yeah, I could see that happening. Why he can said it's plausible. I, I, but I see, see LOL Cena wins. Every time I see Cena, it's LOL Cena wins. LOL. LOL Cena wins. Exactly. Super Cena. He said it in his promo. Yeah, I found They're that funny. I, I swear, yeah, I, I trademarked. 
it's the it's the line at the end that got me on Cena's promo. That hit the trumpets. That got me. It's not even trumpets in his song. The fuck? <laughs> it's more like air like... horns of anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's even got his own promo wrong. Fine. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> guys. Uh, yeah. Match, John. Oh, boy. Okay. Hey, plus, I'm gonna go that far before. All right. <laughs> but, um, I've hated John Cena for years. Well. Unless he beats Jinder, then I'll fucking love him forever. And then have him beat Ric Flair's record? No, his real title record's 20, so he's never gonna beat him. Unofficial. Ric Flair even said No, it's before. real. It's real. Well, it, it's real. It, uh, sorry, I was about to do It's it damn real. <laughs> I went for, I went, I, I, I went in, inside. All I, the way. I, I say unofficial because it's not officially recognized by. Oh, the every, WWE. everything from the, uh, unless it's the Fed is unofficial. I, I, I'm just saying. I say Ring of Honor is a fucking dirt, the dirt worst company when it, we all clearly know it's TNA slash GFW slash Anthem slash everything. So, I just understand. about. I I, 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 I rate well. Neutral Underground's a close third. And 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 I say New, uh, New Japan second, and in WWE's first for me. But I but that could close come to New Japan being number one, because obviously Tushin Liger, uh, Kenny Omega, yeah, Bully Club, Suzuki Goon, Ichiban. <laughs> I just had to get Ichiban in there once. I I watched a lot of New Japan linear on. So I think that's like the only. Major like title match that matters. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we, we can say the Fatal Four Way for the Universal. I was about to say I'm looking forward to the Fatal oh, Four Way. Yeah. yeah, that one. I totally mm. just disregarded that. Whoops. Uh, but yeah, Fatal Four Way Universal Title: Lesnar versus Joe versus Reigns versus Strowman. Um, I hope Joe wins it. Right. Joe and I. Either Joe or Strowman. I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. Or Brock Retaini. Because I'd like to see Brock at WrestleMania defend the title, but not against Reigns, if I'm honest. Um, but no, Brock's going to lose it at SummerSlam. Oh, yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. If he's going to the UFC, he's losing it at SummerSlam. Because apparently UFC officials want him to fight uh, in December. So, he ain't going in with the Universal title, I'll tell you that. Nope. So, I'm, uh... unless like... Look at this toy belt. I, poo. Yeah. I want the UFC heavyweight title belt. And then after he wins that with the Universal title, splits them both and throws them down. And I'll, and I'll laugh my fucking arse off. <laughs> I hate the UFC. I'm going back to WWE. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm going to give away an early prediction for the Fatal 4-Way. Mm -hmm. I want to see Strowman or Joe win. No, but Steve. Um, but uh -huh. prediction. Yeah, I think Roman Reigns is going to walk out as the Universal Champion. Oh, like Steve, what? Gone. What are you doing, Steve? J just go on who you want to win. No one wants to hear. Oh yeah, Roman Reigns is going to win. Roman Reigns, yay! No. No, He's no, 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 man no, says no, backstage, no, no, no. Roman Reigns. <laughs> like once when he, in the WBF when Gary Strider comes out. Gary Strider! <laughs> he goes Roman Reigns and he wanks his arm and goes. <laughs> oh my I'm, gosh. I'm just like predicting what's going to happen. Obviously I want George Strowman and Lesnar to retain. That's like, obviously I want that to happen, but. Anyone if, but Roman. Basically. Anyone but Joanna White. Basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I think. Simple. Unfortunately, Roman Reigns is going to win, and. Boo! Just no. Fuck you, Steve! Fuck you, Steve! <laughs> I just turned here uh, faster than Roman Reigns will ever will. Ooh. No, I'm the fucking heel, you bitch. Because mm. I'm calling I'm a, you out, motherfucker. I'm a tween. Mm, and I'm actually the one that swears in this bitch. So I'm not likely the heel. Well, what Hayden does as well, but. He's a white meat baby face, because, yeah, look at him. Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. 
So, You're both the baby face. He's trying to beat up the big heel. Because I'm literally round. <laughs> and tall. Okay. I'm not seven foot, though. And I can teach that. Ha. And, I, and I, I, by the way, I love big ass. Me, big cast. <laughs> did you see that on the last pay per view, Great Balls of Fire? I don't I, know if we did a show did. after that. Wait, but soon, big ass. As soon as someone posted about it on Twitter, I was like, oh, come on. I think it was me. I posted it about Raw. Welcome back, big ass. Jesus. <laughs> and they had to change the camera angle so it doesn't say big ass. Oh, and then all the the the, the mini things on, around the arena. Eat balls and eat shit. Or, I don't know, obviously not eat shit, but... That's what I. That's what I wanted. To, well, not eat shit literally, but eat fucking something else to get me distracted from that shit pay per view. They were making me eat shit. There you go. There you go. All right. So there's at least three more topics. I added on two more. For oh wait, no, I didn't. No, I had. Yeah, I did add on two more. So first. Just saw it. I, I know. So? I'm. I'm like tired. My brain's not functioning very properly right now. I'm so mommy. <laughs> Uh, so, Andy Hour, real quick, something from the Andes. G1 Climax is going yeah, on in nice. New Japan no, for wrestling. No, it's not between wrestlers. For anyone non New Japan moans about it. Okay. That uh, would be so horrible. <laughs> there was a clip going around on Twitter of Kenny Omega and Tamatonga, Bullet Club members, having tension. So, yeah, mm, it's I could see Kenny turning face before the end of 2017, yeah. and then before he, but well, before that he will lose the U.S. title because Kenny Omega is not going to hold it for very long. Probably, I not. don't think he's going to be here for the expansion of the U.S. division or whatever. I think he's going to the Fed. After in Royal Rumble, I like hope... like you predicted last year, last year. If he does go to WWE, I I hope I hope they do not screw him up. I'm guessing he'll probably go to NXT. Yeah. Even though that's not where he should go. Yeah, like that that would be strange because. Or maybe he'll get the AJ Styles push. Maybe Vince won't like him uh, at first, but then. Love him because he sells merch. Oh yeah, he's gonna be an instant merch star as soon as he hits the WWE. Exactly, exactly why AJ is over right now. Well, too well. Sort of. I just found that that like they keep on teasing tension within the Bullet Club, and Kenny Omega is like the leader of the tension, which is kind of funny because he's the leader of Bullet Club. Uh, well, there's no leader in Bullet Club apparently, according to the commentators of New Japan. Okay, well... Uh, yeah, I've been watching for a while. I've been watching since the... Well, I watched a little bit before... Uh, when Bala was... Well, Bala was good as a heel. Like, well, mind you, he could swear. He's like, oh, fuck this and fuck that and... Fuck you and I'm the best, fuck you. You know, sort of stuff like that. Like, Conor McGregor. Like, actually... Non-wrestling related, quick minute, well, kind of, because it was wrestling style of the, um, like the, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but the interview Rest thing conference. that McGregor and Mayweather did. It's one of the biggest sporting things, so it's basically uh, related. Um, Conor McGregor wore a big, like, like, embraided letter saying, fuck you, all over his jacket. And they now sell it for $6,500. But I want it. <laughs> That's something I would wear. Like a, like a jacket and, and tie and all that saying, fuck you. That's how you get like, the chicks. Right there. That suit jacket that well, Connor was wearing. There you go. There you go. Well, yeah, because you have to pay an arm and a leg for it. Yeah. But yeah, no, back to, back to professional wrestling because I had made a tie right there because obviously that's a big that's a big topic for uh, fight fans around the world. And it's obviously wrestling is fighting, sort of. So, kind of related. Uh, but yeah, no, um... I am, uh, yeah, I'm quite, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm tired. <laughs> um, so two more topics. 
one pertains to the podcast. If you guys were paying attention on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, we finally launched the apparel store through What a Maneuver. If you guys saw the video on all of our YouTube channels, that was a pretty big step into the future. And we thought it would be a good idea to talk about how the process of getting all, all this merchandise out and just mm -hmm. the trials and tribulations I, I've had to go on through. I, I made that sound a lot more worse than it actually was, but it's okay. It was kind of hard. Yeah. Kind of hard. Controversy. For both of us, really, because we were both involved. Hayden was as well. Obviously, talking about it and discussing how we do it. And then Hayden just, uh, you know, uh, you know, we to it. No, but no, uh, seriously, um, it was hard. It was hard for all of us, really. So, yeah, so... I can't speak for Hayden as, and you, but it's hard for me. But, uh, well, me having to create all the logos, logo for it and having to do many edits because it was wrong, I almost threw my computer at the wall. That's how angry I got because <laughs> I have a short temper because of my uh, mental shit and all that. I don't want to talk about personal things, but yeah, no, um, it was hard. It was hard. Mm -hmm. and, but for Steve, it was extra harder. Yeah. But you can go through that yourself. Yeah, so initially this process started in May. We're in July now, guys. It took two months. So um, in May, I contacted what a maneuver. They were, the owner was down, was totally cool about it. Uh, super friendly, professional, all that good stuff. Uh, so there was a problem with PayPal. And without getting too much into detail, you, for whatever reason, I couldn't like transfer money into my PayPal account. It wouldn't allow me, which was weird. Uh, so anyway, I, I was able to do it. I, we did something, and I was able to get the money through. So we had all that, and then... Josh was gracious enough to design the t-shirt, or the design, just the design in general. Uh, He's fucked up, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, we had to redo it quite a few times, well, he had to redo it quite a few times, because yeah. there, I didn't realize the, cri the specific criteria, and they, it was just like a trial and error thing. Luckily, third time was the charm. And we just got a whole new design going. And before anybody complains, because I saw this tweet before, it wasn't directed at us, but yes, it's a Bullet Club parody t shirt. I totally admit to that. That would be stupid if I didn't. Uh, but, okay, it's it's our own take. It's vastly different. It doesn't have the guns, it doesn't have the, like, the, like the, the arrow insignia, and it doesn't have the bullets, and it doesn't say bullet, but. You know, it's it's our spin on it, but it's almost unique in a way because it d doesn't directly look like the Bullet Club except from the top layout. Everything yeah. else is different, and they don't have worldwide on their T-shirts. So fuck you, Marks. <laughs> so it, it's very unique, and I'm I'm actually looking at the hoodie right now. It's hanging up, and you lucky bastard, DHL screw me over. Yeah, it's the only problem with. Uh... Yeah, well, yeah. International fuckboys like me. I wasn't going to go know. that far, Josh, but... Well, you I'm talking about myself here, so I can. <laughs> if you were talking about me like that, I'd slap you sideways if you were standing in front of me. <laughs> so, no joke. Overall, the process and everything, the owner was super understanding of everything, very professional. Um, I... Oh, yeah. I've... Never been more happy to work alongside like somebody else without even knowing them. Granted, got to know Hayden and Josh more before I started working with them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But very impressed with the customer service. Um, I I don't really know what else to say uh, other than buy buy stuff, buy our stuff. Please. Yes, a link in the description will be in there. Uh, so the unique thing about the design is it can go for t-shirts, unisex t-shirts or women t-shirts, uh, tank tops, hoodies, and if you have a small child or a baby, you can get a toddler's clothes and or, and or a baby onesie. So, I, I did not know that. Side notes, once the size increases, the price increased too. So, I learned that the hard way when I had to order Shamely 3XL. 
and the prices went up from XL to 2 to 3 to 4. So I do 4 XL, so for fat people like me, you're salty. And if you're international, it's $8.99 for international shipping, so... Yeah. It's only just a bit more than the WWE shop. It's much more worth it. The t-shirt's better quality, so... Mm -hmm. Well, from what I've heard. But I, I am getting my own, and I, I will give a review of the quality on the show, on the podcast. I promise. So, Once I get it. Right. Hopefully oh. soon. So, the way, it's kind of unique how they they did the apparel. They listed a uh, different material... And I had no idea that, like, the t-shirt, the hoodie, and the tank top were all different material. So, I, I've tried all three. They're very comfortable. You guys will like it. I'm not just, like, playing, like, oh, yeah, I like my stuff. No, it's it's true. Like, the material on it is fantastic. Very comfortable for outdoor wear, indoor wear, you know, whatever, whatever you do. Does it, does it have a breathability? Can you, can it, like... Give you like if you're wearing a t-shirt saying it's hot and you can it like make you not cooler but can breathe your natural air out to the world if you know what I mean like it, it aerates like say like what's that what are those shoes that that had breathable things in them that never sold can't remember the name I think of it maybe later when once we wrapped up but yeah that sort of thing. Like it sort of aerates and, and makes you cooler or something. Um, honestly, like it's like a mesh design. No. I know more about clothes than I probably should. For the t-shirt, that's, that's that's living living around women. Which I I love I love my mum and dad by the way, and I and, and and that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing actually. Makes me a lot tougher in in in, in an actual fact, in the fact that I can take emotions more in a, in that way, not physical because obviously no. I'm 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 weak compared to my 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 uh, my other people in the family that are men. But there you go. Um, hmm. But I probably think a lot of feminists say, oh, "Oh shit, no, you might have to cut that out." <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but anyways, back. No, but yeah, the the, the t-shirts apparently are good quality, but I don't know because the actual will screw me over. But that's not the fault of the company. And let me say, before we finish, they have been nice to me too. They've helped me with DHL being fuck boys, uh, fuck ass wipes, cocks, any, you know everything. So they've helped me a lot with through the process, and I've been really impatient because obviously I'm not that type of person. Um, I like to get stuff quickly done as pos soon as possible because then my paranoid head gets sort. It's like a sort of a, no, I don't want to call it that, but it's sort of like a like a disease in my brain. I have to get stuff done quickly. Not a disease, but you know what I mean. Like a like a like a mechanism in my brain. But yeah, no, they've been nothing but nice to me. The what maneuver guys? Well, the guy that does the social media anyway. If there's a separate person, if there's not, then thank you, owner slash social media slash whatever. But yeah, whoever runs the social media, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the help. The bonus part, guys. Um, they offer custom orders. There's a section. I'm pretty sure if you go onto the actual t-shirt page where you click on your sizes and whatnot and add to cart, there's actually a section for custom orders. So if you type out an email, I don't know if you can request for a different material. I'm going to assume that's what you can do. But you, you guys I'm assuming color as well. Yeah. Yeah. So say if you wanted a limited edition gold or something. Maybe. There's lots of options. Lots was, of options. Yeah. But be prepared to pay a little bit extra if you want that customized options. Because everything, every, everybody has a price for what a maneuver yes. and a million dollar man. Yes, sir. So there, you guys, if you guys want to order a T-shirt or a tank top or a hoodie, I uh, highly suggest you guys do so. Link in the description down below if you're watching on YouTube. So. There we go. Last but not least, I, I'm kind of selfish for mentioning this, but it's wrestling related. It's okay. So, uh, at the time of recording this, this is Friday night. Uh, tomorrow night is a SmackDown house show at the Joe Louis Arena, which I will be attending. Um, Lesnar versus Samoa Joe for the Universal title is going to be main eventing. I, I'm assuming it's main eventing because that'd be stupid if it didn't. But. <laughs> 
Junior <laughs> Mahomes main eventing. Oh lord, you know, I guess that's a tag match. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try and record some footage from the house show and upload it on YouTube. Now, I want this podcast out on YouTube as soon as possible, so I'm probably not going to include footage on this episode. It may actually be a separate vlog. Uh, however, I would keep an eye out for that house show footage. It's going to be very interesting. I will be rocking the PWW Club t-shirt, so if you guys are going to that house show and you want to be like, yo, fan of the podcast, or hey, I listen to it and you guys suck, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Just don't slap him. It, he, has, he has a face. Yeah, I have a face. So. He, he's not a mystery persona online. He has a body, he has a face, he's a person. I am a person. I am indeed a exactly. person. So don't slap him, don't please. Slap Let's not do There's that. no violence at the last show at the Joe, please. No violence. Yeah. Last show at the Joe, lots of historic moments have happened throughout wrestling. Uh, so, there you go. Expect some footage if I'm able to get it. I'm actually going to make sure that it's... My phone is horizontal. So that way we can get that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I actually know yeah. I'm responsible for that, so. Oops. That was 2014, so I was younger. I'll blame the young card. Don't worry, I did it in June, so, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Mm. That's what I was going, mmm. Because mm. <laughs> I knew. I knew. The, the, the vertical, vertical videos for look, one that does it in the middle sucks. That sucks balls. Whoever does it, except Hayden, because he's my friend. He's an arse. Hey, I'm an arse, so it's alright. Well, I, I wanted to be nice to you, because you didn't deserve it. <laughs> See, I am nice, but fuck TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to get that in there. And fuck Vince Russo. Hashtag Jim Cornette for life. Whoa. Why not? <laughs> Whoa, hold on, no. No, okay. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you there. I, 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 I actually agree with his opinions on Lucha Underground, so I agree with most things. Nine, nine, 89% of his things. But I don't like... The, I, I, but I, don't like I don't agree with Ibushi and Omega being banned from wrestling. Yeah, I don't agree with that. His comparison of Omega was kind of uh, weird. Just I just love the Jim Cornette experience. Don't at me. There you go. And the drive through And the fact that... Uh, and th that his co-host Brian Lash just fucking dumped uh, Storm. Oh, actually, no, I shouldn't really say that because he follows me. Kenny Bowling follows me on Twitter. Fuck. No comment. Okay. <laughs> so with I love Jim. There you go. There you go. And last show at the Joe. Yay! Last show at the Joe. Yeah. I can't go because I'm in Britain. <laughs> but I will go to the last show at the O2 if that ever closes. So there you go. Oh no, not Wembley because that sucks balls and it stinks of. Ball sweating ass, so yeah, and they strip search you, not strip, but fool you, nads. So you go, fun, fun, yeah, yeah. But I'm looking forward to seeing that footage. Yeah, and you, and you, you. Well, I won't get to see Les. I, I would literally get to see Lesnar's last match possibly. So I'm looking forward to that, but you get to see him first, which I'm jealous. It's actually kind of crazy because it's the first time I'm seeing a lot of these guys. So, live, I should say, live. <laughs> I'd, I'd be concerned if I was doing a pro wrestling podcast without seeing these guys on TV. That, hmm, no. Yeah, you're talking about wrestling when you haven't seen it before. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I've never seen any of these guys. Hey, who's this Jinder Mahal guy? He looks Indian. Then racist from Mark's I'm so, Steve, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> it's racist. No, I'll probably be the one that says it to be fair, because I, ac I accidentally come out with things, as you know, because Steve's had to edit a lot of shit out. I haven't been racist, though. But I don't like Jim Hall. Fuck him. Not literally. I don't want to do that. I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like swinging that way. But yeah. But not that, not that that's fine. That's fine, do you admit that? But <laughs> I don't. Personally. You're burying and yourself, you Josh. You buried yourself oh. in Triple H Barry's talent. Just kidding. That doesn't happen. I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> does. Depends <laughs> on the talent. <laughs> Curtis Axel. Anyway, that's a solid point to wrap up on. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy this episode of Pro Wrestling Weekly, if you're on YouTube, 
Make sure to buy slam that like button below. Subscribe to all of our channels. Turn on our notifications. Subscribe on. Buy our shit. Buyer, buyers apparel. Our one design. Oh shit! No, I'm joking. PWW club. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah, we're we're poor. PW. We need money. We 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 need to eat. No, we don't need to eat big. But if you, if you can, that support the podcast, and maybe we can do it more often. Yeah. There exactly. Yeah. Found all of us. We need food. Oh yeah. We need food to get to get through this shitty wrestling. I'm about to be a broke college student in a few weeks, guys. So. Please. I, I'm I'm about to be I'm about to go to look for work, full time, not have to go to school or college. I'm going to be the most adult out of all all y'all. Yeah. In this in this school anyway. Josh is just old. That's his problem. Oh. Yeah, I'm old. I, 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 I'm old. Yeah. No, it's true. He, oh. He's right. Okay. I'm old. All right. I mean. But but thanks for being sorry for me. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Fuck you. <baby. laughs> Why not? Oh. We need to hashtag fuck Hayden. He, he is turning heel. He is He's a heel, heel from the underground. He's turning heel on Josh. I'm, I'm, I'm no. I don't want to be babyface. I have to be a tweener. Fuck it. Rivalry. No, I'm joking. Oh jeez. Feud. All, all <laughs> of us on Twitter, including the official Pro Wrestling Weekly podcast Twitter account, where we sometimes tweet on there. It's, it's not a lot. lot. We just we, me and Steve just mainly retweet each other. Because we're fucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we suck. No, I'm joking. But yes, iTunes, leave us a five-star rating or a comment, or just tell us how we're doing. Uh, yeah, that seems good. So if, okay. if, 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 if you say we suck, we don't need it. Thanks. No, I'm joking. You can leave a question. Unless you do it in a... If you do it in Kurt Angle's theme, then I will accept it. Or if it's constructive criticism, I'll also accept it. Yes, yeah. You're, you use. How can you do that? I don't understand. I can't compute. Just, just change. I can't compute most things because I'm old, but there you go. You suck. You suck. Well, yeah, in audio form, but in a, in a fucking typed comment. Let's get in the show before we ramble on anymore. Yeah, we're burying ourselves. Thanks, if you do buy our stuff, thank you. We appreciate you. What is and if no? you send us a pic on Twitter, we'll retweet it and thank you immensely and follow you and all that shit. Yeah, and you'll even get a shout and, out and maybe, on the maybe, and maybe we might do well if if we get if someone admits to buying our shit, maybe we can review a review a show that they recommend. Unless it's China porn, I'm not reviewing China porn. I prefer or any porn from any wrestler. No, thank you. Let's not. But if it's that. a retro review, then or. Or indie show that we've never seen before, or ICW or Ring of Honor or stuff like that. Definitely send it if you buy if you buy a shirt. Yeah, that's, that's an incentive, isn't it? That, that that is actually a pretty solid incentive for thinking of that on the fly. So exactly. Yeah. See, I'm smart and old. And old. I'm old and smart and wise. Yep. Yep. Wisdom. You can thank me later. I recommend China Paul. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't look on my kids. Let, let's not do that. All right, so we are burying a further holes, further. Ho mm, okay, yeah. All right. Digging, so digging, guess... digging twenty nine souls in twenty nine holes, or whatever. Whatever the for catchphrase was to take a sip before the rumble, and didn't do. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you guys in the next episode of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Goodbye, and good night. Center.